Greetings, geeks, and welcome to another edition of Gimmicks Grab Bag. Yes, this is the video series where we actually take a look at those crazy ideas they had back in the day to get your attention. What was it going to take? It wasn't just good art. It wasn't just good story. They had to give you something extra to spend your money. And so we go and we explore and we are excited to bring you some really unique items today. So Michael, why don't you kick us off? So I will admit, I recently bought these just for the sake of this podcast. I have not even opened them from the place that I got them. I got them at Blast from the Past Collectibles in Bayshore, New York. I was just trolling through, you know, dollar bins and found these suckers. And I bought them just for this show. Okay. So I am, I haven't even taken them out of the plastic yet. They're still in the, in the bag and the board. So the first one I've got, I don't even know what this is. But this, we kind of mentioned this on the podcast, and I've been waiting to show you. Oh, yeah. Wow. From the Clive Barker Razor line by Marvel. Okay, so Hokum and Hex, I've finally seen it now. I just mentioned it. So it's got this, like, you know, reflective cover, and, you know, it's in box. kind of appear, yeah. Yeah. So I I legit spent three bucks on it. Wow. <laughs> I just, I mean, I don't even know what it's about. Inside is an ad for Meteor Man. All right. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about this po this comic or anything, but I just solely bought it for this cover for this podcast. So <laughs> that's what I got. We want a 200-page essay by Friday, Michael. You tell us all about Hokum and Hex. I will. This is issue number one. The an all new tradition of magic and mayhem. Dun dun dun. <laughs> From Clive Barker. <laughs> What's your first one you got? All right. So uh, now around that same time, there was another group that was launching a new comics line, and that was the Ultraverse, right? And we've actually reviewed this issue of Mantra or Mantra, however you prefer. We've talked about it, and uh, we thought it was a pretty good book. We enjoyed the read, you know, a male warrior caught in a female's body. What's he gonna do? All those things. So, but interestingly, they didn't do anything special for a first issue. Hokum and Hex got a fancy cover. Right. Ultraverse, Malibu just kind of left it as is. Or did they? Uh-oh. <laughs> Always looking to innovate. They brought us what may be the first fully holographic cover. Wow, that's okay. kind of cool. That's kind of cool yeah. cover. That's pretty neat. I mean, like, because what? X-Men had like a little tiny one. Little, little square. <laughs> yeah, little, little card size. The Spider-Mans had the bigger one. But the full cover cover as a hologram i mean and it's beautiful and it's actually got like dimension and and texture to it now the one thing i'll mention here for those who are sharp with their eyes there are some differences here and yeah that, the actual image of the villain in the background there is different than the image of the villain here like huh. he's shorter he's and he's down farther on this also this is really random this is only a nitpick for me but right here, you can see they have the artist's signature, okay? Mm -hmm. And for some reason, on this cover... No signature? <laughs> they moved it down to the bottom. Huh. So, so it's right there instead of being up here. So anyway, it is a unique cover. It is something brand new. And yeah, hologram. It's pretty cool looking, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Yeah. And they cool. did it for like Prime. They did it for, you know, all the all the different uh, comics from the Ultraverse. That, pretty cool. You know. So my next one is another thing we talked about on the podcast that I, again, saw this at Blast of the Past and had to buy it just because I could tell it was a gimmick cover. I'm opening it for the first time. Oh, oh I don't believe it. Yes. Oh, okay. so good luck with that. So I don't damn it. My Shadowhawk, if I tried to open it, this one is notoriously difficult to open. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's gonna, it feels like it's gonna rip already. Like the, even though the adhesive is, you know, 25, 30 years old, it's gonna be. So, so what does it say on the cover itself? Does it tell you what the feature is? So it says, uh, "Killer first issue of Force Works." Yeah. And it doesn't say what the thing is, but it feels like a poster inside. 
yeah it, it basically it folds out like all the way like it's this gigantic kind of mural poster and for those who don't know this is recently avengers west coast was canceled in the timeline of the issues we've been reading so like end of 93 it was like early 94 it got canceled and then they relaunched as force works and this new team kind of upgraded outfits yeah so it did just damage a little bit of the thing but then you pull it out and this this big like that. pop up thing that is intense wow wow yeah it's totally ripping as i yeah as but now, I, but now, now it's worthless you destroyed it but yeah. there it is you get it all so i mean do you even know who that character is in the middle like can you is it uh, Wonder Man? Who is Wonder, that? Wonder Man on both sides, and uh, and there's somebody else behind him that's kind of like grabbing his head. I'm not really sure. Oh, interesting. Oh, so it is like a double sided image. So it's not yeah. just a two. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So I mean, that's a pretty good gimmick. You got to give it. It's to pretty him. cool. I mean, if if you don't mind ripping your comic, I mean, I spent you know. <laughs> Three ninety nine on this just to open it, <laughs> just to, and and honestly, like the cover itself, what you actually see, which I can't even fold it back to the way it was, is is kind of nice in itself, just like the main part of it. But it's totally destroyed now. I, You'll never I, see it again. You'll never see that image again. It's <laughs> yeah, and it will it'll never go back in the bag anymore. Like it's just gonna be squished yeah. and messed up. But that's not a log box book anymore. That's a wall book that you literally have to just tack it to the wall. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But yeah, this was something that I saw and I could just I could tell I'm like oh this is gonna be something that's either gonna get wrecked or be awesome. And it's actually got a wraparound cover which is kind of cool too. It's a full oh, yeah wrap around scarlet witch that wasn't the new outfit we just saw in one division no but i i'll tell you right now when that new outfit pops up on hot toys i am ordering that hot toy before i even be, before the credit card could even say charge it'll be ordered <laughs> Now, everybody, we have to say this is true progress and a testament to you, the watcher, and the listeners of Wizards, the podcast guide to comics, because prior to this, Michael pretty much was just buying all the new books off the shelf for the last few years. Now he started the podcast, he's looking back, he's finding the old stuff, so it's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, so this last one here is a true... I don't know what to say. It's not a printing gimmick. It's not something to get your attention other than the dimensions. What? So look at this here. This is a Mike Allred comic called Vertical. And if you huh. can see here, it works as a vertical image. Okay. And wow. that is how everything inside in the story is all laid out vertically. So it's Quibi before Quibi was a thing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And it's about this guy who he only feels happy and alive when he is in free fall. So he's always trying to find ways to safely jump off of buildings. And <laughs> also it's, it's taking place in the sixties. So it, he goes to Andy Warhol's factory and he's there, you know, seeing him film, film and do paintings and all these different things. So it, it, I picked this up in the heat, you know, of my Mike Allred fascination when I first discovered a madman. And yeah, it's just one of those really unique books. When you saw this sitting on this shelf, you're like, what's that about? Then you open it, you're like, okay, wow. You really had to think this one out, you know, because the rest of it is maybe just panels, but then there's quite a few of, the, you know, of these styles. So it's pretty neat. So I have one other thing to show you if you're interested. Yeah. It's not exactly a gimmick, but I saw this and I didn't know it even existed and I had to buy it. And I figured if anyone would know, you would know. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And it's wow. Now I've never seen that particular cover. I knew that now comics produced a married with children series, but 2099? Yeah. I was like, this. I just saw it in a bin. I'm like, I must buy it. And then I said to myself, at some point, our podcast will do a Robin's Reading Rainbow of this. Because I need to know <laughs> how 2099, Back to the Future, ties in with Married with Children. I need to know. <laughs> just... That is so awesome. I love that. So, man. Uh, 
Great. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Gimmicks Grab Bag. Oh, man, there's so much more to find out there. So many more that you're probably aware of. So if you ever own some of these books or you have some you want to share yourself, find us on Twitter at Wizards Comics, on Instagram at Wizards underscore comics. Appreciate you joining us. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe because we have so much more to come. And until next time, keep your books bagged and boarded.